And finally, uh, for Orwell, Hardik Sinkerly. With um, Philip and Jenny, you've had, uh, with regard to Dickens, the best of defences and the worst of defences. Um, <laughs> There is no shortage of uh, academic uh, and literary expertise on the panel, um, which is why they invited me um, at the end. And I'm just going to talk from the heart. It's interesting, I'm the only non-English person on the panel as a Scot. I tend to be a bit more dispassionate about Dickens and don't tend to carry uh, that, that kind of the luggage of Englishness uh, with me. However, I'd be absolutely uh, scunnered if you asked me to talk about Burns. Um, <laughs> I think what, for me, the first book, again, speaking very kind of uh, from a visceral and personal point of view, the first book that kept me awake till three o'clock in the morning reading was 1984. Uh, the second book that kept me awake uh, reading till uh, three in the morning was Animal Farm. Uh, now, obviously, since then, uh, I have experienced a, a similar inability to part from the page. Um, and uh, I can now say that I'm free of my judging duties. Philip's book was one of them last year. Um, and I wasn't able to tell him that till today, so I'd like to go publicly and say how much I enjoyed his book. Um, <laughs> but there, there really is no comparison between Dickens and Orwell. Dickens is an amazingly good storyteller, a, a cracking uh, conveyor of character and story, for sure. But Philip makes a great claim to the number of characters in Dickens, which for me actually hampers the enjoyment of Dickens. There's just too many people. Uh, which is why I think he, he lends himself so well to television, because there's credits at the end, and you can remind yourself who is who. Um, and 30,000 people is indeed a small town, um, but if anyone's been to Scythe, you'll understand that it's not always a good thing to have <laughs> such small towns. I think uh, Dickens also, for me, was quite lazy. Tale of Two Cities, a truly great writer, would have written about seven or eight cities. So why limit it to just the two? Um, I think. Um, but on a serious note, for me, here's a really interesting thing, and I, I make no apologies for saying what's about to be a very contentious statement, but it's what I believe, which is that if Dickens and Orwell were alive today, Dickens would be writing for EastEnders or Coronation Street. That's what he would be doing. That's what he would be doing. And Orwell would be probably speech writing for the Revolutionary Communist Party or something. Um, because what, what Dickens, in my opinion at any rate, lacks, I mean he is, you know, one of the greatest writers that has written in the English language, but what for me stops him being truly brilliant is he doesn't, for me, have a global vision. I think Orwell definitely has a global vision. People in India will read Orwell and relate to, to, to notions of, of freedom and totalitarianism and what he was attacking. Any child anywhere in the world can read Animal Farm. And there are very few novels. The only other one I can think of, and I'm sure there are others, but the only other novel I can think of that matters as much to me as a 40-year-old man, I know what you're thinking, madam. I use Clarins, grey skin. <laughs> um, I am 40. Um, is Catcher in the Rye. You know, something that I read as a teenager and something that means different things to me, but you know, deep felt things to me now. Animal Farm still works incredibly well, read as an, uh, an adult. Um, I, also, I, I also think about his contribution to contemporary, I mean obviously it's easier for Orwell, I concede, to have an impact on 2009, simply because he came later in the timeline, and there would, you know, there would be no Orwell as we know it without Dickens. But that's a bit like saying there'd be no Westlife without Take That. So <laughs> it's worth pondering on those equally important intellectual arguments. Um, but I think Orwell has given us the notion of Room 101 for sure, the idea of Big Brother. Uh, and also, I can't imagine I was the only one that was thinking uh, about uh, Orwell during the, 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 the sexing up of the Iraq dossier on the war. So I think there is something... Dickens was brilliant at telling you about what was going on in Dickens's life. I think the grasp into the future of Orwell 
um, is what elevates him to a special place. But let me leave you with this final thought, which is why I think Orwell uh, ought to win this uh, false dichotomy but equally meaningful debate. Um, is when he was in Jura trying to write, a piper started playing a few, few yards away from his uh, bothy. And Orwell came out, stood as far away from the piper as I am from you, madam, and waited for him to stop. And then he leaned in and he said, you will let me know if the sound of my typewriter puts you off your piping. <laughs> That's why he's genius.